Hello, hello everybody, it is 10.58 a.m. Central Time on the 14th of November 2020, Saturday here in the United States. Hope you are doing well. We are here to talk about seismic events. And let me turn on a display capture so you can see what I see. We're using Earthquake 3D, the program. If you're not familiar with it, you can get a free version or a paid version. I do not get anything for recommending it, but I do recommend that you use a copy of it to keep track of where the earthquakes are. Now, the program allows us to combine feeds. We're using the USGS and the EMSC coming out of Europe to give us a good idea of the areas that have been hit. And then we're looking at about 48 hours worth of activity right now, just so we can understand the areas that have moved and which areas are getting ready to move. So let's just start over here in the West Pacific where we have a bunch of deep earthquakes that are raised high off the globe for easy identification purposes. We have a deep five here in Indonesia, deep fours going down all the way into New Zealand. And I guess this is probably where I should start the update. 5.5 came rolling in right at our warned area. 1.5 magnitude under expected. So I was looking for 6.5 to 7.0, 5.5 to 5.7 came rolling in. And it's right in the middle of the warned area, the U-shaped bend on the plate boundary. Let me show you where we warned and just compare to the area that was hit. So the area warned was right next to the island of New Caledonia here. And the spot that was actually hit was right next to the island of New Caledonia. 1.5 magnitude under though, we're still waiting for something bigger now still to come in. And that would be between the 5.5 and the 4.5 over to the west. And the middle point between the two goes into Solomon Islands at this time. So now that the area next to New Caledonia has been hit by a magnitude and a half under expected, we move the area slightly west and we still watch for 6.5. Now New Zealand, we've got to talk about this. South of New Zealand, a 5.7 also struck. 5.5 to 5.7 on the plate boundary south of New Zealand right down here. But something else happened in between where the earthquake is to the south and the earthquakes are up to the north. At the halfway point, White Island actually had a new eruption take place. An eruption after they went <laughs> just overboard trying to deny the first little round of activity. They said it was just a steam burst with a little bit of ash. Well, look at this. White, whoops, wrong thing to click on. Again, I should turn on the ad blocker, but there we are. So a volcanic ash cloud, again, look at this, not identifiable from satellite, no longer identifiable on satellite imagery, no further reports, minor steam emissions remain, and that's the leftovers from what happened of 6,000 foot high little steam event with ash this time. Volcanic ash, okay, surface to 050, low level ash emissions. And again, they tried to downplay it the day before. They really did. So, going down the list of the Volcanic Ash Advisory Center, I'm looking for any other new additions to the list that either are big blasts or new volcanoes that we haven't seen in a while. And all I'm seeing right now are just the same usual suspects on the list. The only new one I would put in there is White Island. Ibu, that's regular. Also, Sanjay and Sabankaya and Reventador. Those are all regular suspects. Okay, so I'm taking the time to look at that because, look, we have a set of deep earthquakes that took place right next to it here in the Kermadex. So to, you can't ignore it, but I say to ignore it is foolish. Now going over to the west, our deep five, going from our deep five in two directions, up to the north, another set of fours going up to 4.9, and another set of fours going up to 4.9, over to the west. So to the north and to the west, same-sized earthquakes within a hair of a point of one another, spreading out two directions from where our deep earthquake is. And the deep earthquake is right on the letter D. Letter D stands for deep earthquake point to watch for. It's a forecast area. But looking at the plate boundaries over here on the USGS map, you see we have a pathway going to the north marked in red lines and a pathway going to the west across Indonesia marked in the red lines. So the spots that were hit, Sumatra, Indonesia, going up into Myanmar, and 
from Philippines going up into Taiwan and South Japan and the Ryukyu Islands. Both of those, Indonesia and the Ryukyu Islands, both were in the warning areas for this past week. Now we see movement spread across them all the same size. And, like I said, a 5.1 struck up at Myanmar. Let's show you the plate boundary in Myanmar. Right here, the red line. You'll also notice all the way down across the Indian Ocean a 5.2 earthquake struck. So this 5.1 is about the same size as what spread all the way down here on the fracture zone. Southwest Indian Ocean, 5.2. So same size energy going across over into China and going across the Indian Ocean. And then look, Pakistan. Pakistan was struck by a 5.5. It's a little bit bigger than the other activity going out and across Asia today. But going back two days, you just take the cumulative total of everything coming across, and that adds up to that five-ish range. Now, adding a little bit more in, look, we didn't have hardly anything get reported out of Russia or China in the past week. I mean, there were a few earthquakes, but I'm thinking that there were probably a few more that we're just not getting on the feeds. Now let me show you where the 5.5 is in Pakistan. It's going to make a little bit more sense. Well, there it is. Look at that. Look at the red line. The red line is the plate boundary again. And it's going right through Pakistan. It makes a bend and a curl and then goes over into Iran. And you'll notice no earthquakes in Iran today at all. And I think that's about to flip on its head now that a new 5 has been introduced into the system. That means new 5s are going to flow across the plate boundary. That puts us right in the middle of Iran. So at the Iran-Iraq border, I would issue a new warning for a new 5-ish or 5.5 or less, somewhere in between 5 and 5.5, to be striking very soon. Very soon, I mean it, within days. Further to the west, Turkey started to swarm again, and really we should just say it's carried on swarm means since our big earthquake struck there last week, 7 point something, and tsunami accompanying that. Since then, fives went up across Croatia, went up across into Macedonia as well. So Macedonia is first, then Croatia, but Croatia got hit first. But location-wise, down here to the south and up to the north following our little arrow. And then going over to the east, Romania got hit by 4.0 range activity. And Switzerland got hit by 4.0 range activity. The only spot that did not get hit by fours was Italy. And I'm going to go ahead and cancel the warning now it's been seven days actually eight days so it's eight days in and we have not seen any 4.0 range activity in Italy instead it swarmed with little twos ones and twos which is a hundred times less power than I was looking for instead it went over to the east and has stayed so far over to the east it has not gone out of Europe much so a seven down here in a series of fives with not much follow-up activity out to the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And all we've seen on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge since that 7, we have a few 4s at the most, one of which, an upper 4 near 5, striking up next to Svalbard on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, letting us know that energy is starting to flow out of Europe finally, but it's been about 8 days. Another spot that did not get hit, English Channel, South UK. And the flow going across Poland too. Poland hasn't been hit much. So it's all stuck down here. I want you to think of this like a dam holding back a lot of water. And you just had a huge storm which filled it all the way up. You have a new push coming across now. That should be enough to put it across, to break it, and send it across Europe. So that would mean that I might just be running a few days behind. If today is day 8 on a 7-day watch, we're one day beyond the warning time. But I would think in the next couple days or less, we will see it but it's going to be a slightly different location. If I were in central Italy, now look at the earthquakes. Look where the rings overlap. The rings overlap now in north Italy on Florence and down in south Italy, right down here at the boot tip, or the center of the boot, if you will. Those are the two spots to watch in Italy now. Okay, so watch central Italy's north and central Italy's south, right where the rings overlap. I'm not going to cancel the warning entirely, although it is expired, I, well, I did say I canceled it, but I'm not going to fully re reverse the forecast. We're not going to say it's not going to happen. We're going to wait another day or two at the most. If 48 hours goes by and nothing happens by then, 
then I will fully issue the all clear and we will just try to figure out where the energy is gone but I think we know where the energy is it's stuck back where all the earthquakes are taking place just basic stuff here we want it to flow out to the mid-atlantic ridge here and here Iceland and the Azores and even the North Pole which is starting to go up there now to the Arctic Circle now jumping back across I want you to look at the planet this way really quick 48 hours look at what has gone on all the way around the West Pacific who's right in the middle of all this hot mess Aziz get your prawns on the Bobby okay or take them off the Barbie actually because you know, you're gonna need them now check it out look you don't have any earthquake activity across the whole continent you had a three point something earthquake strike here a couple days ago I forgot to mention in my last update but I would expect new activity to come flowing in from the Northwest that would go right up here right into South Indonesia going into the arrow so look for new activity right along the coast to the Northwest how big well it should be about as big as what's currently striking all the way around and the highest we're going is what 4.9 okay so watch out here Northwest Australia first part then we watch for threes in the mid-range three level to spread across the whole plate this includes Southwest down by Perth Southeast down by Adelaide up to the East by Northeast out in the middle of nowhere and right in the middle of the plate down by Uluru, Uluru, Uluru? it's the giant rock that comes up out of the ground airs rock the one that they show in all the movies okay right there in the middle is where we watch two as well so one two three four spots we watch in addition to the spot to the Northwest I guess that's five spots that should be hit in the next several days this week okay as we go up across the open silent zone in Japan you'll see all of South Japan all of Central Japan and North Japan are quiet 48 hours no significant earthquake activity I think that's going to change I think to keep in line with the rest of the plate what's going on around the rest of the entire West Pacific it would have to go up to at least 5.5 we would add this all together what's coming its way all these fours and a couple fives and the deep earthquakes and we would put out the warning in the middle of Japan I'm just going to go ahead and put it right at Tokyo this time Tokyo downtown Tokyo get ready you got 5.0 plus activity on its way and it's pretty significant in its own right going around if it goes any higher than a five could go up into the upper five low six level but I would think in the five range again because the rest of the planet's doing five range and right in the middle of the open area that middle fulcrum point Tokyo in between our two sets of earthquakes the 4.9 to the south and the 4.4 to the north as we go further to the north we go across the Aleutian Island chain and it's a 4.4 on one side of the Aleutians and a 4.3 on the other then going from that 4.3 it's all threes and twos and ones that spread up like a ramp up into the plate let me zoom in on this to see it so it's going along the plate boundary to the north and it reaches right up to Mount Denali then anything past Denali is just a trickle out it's all being absorbed by the edge of the plate on the edge of the craton the energy is being taken in off the thick red line here up here to the north and it's going into the interior of the plate into the craton well the energy doesn't just stop there it doesn't just get absorbed in Alaska and go away it goes down across the edge of the craton down across the plate boundary as well the red line here and it goes down into the United States into the Juan de Fuca fracture zone which is out in the ocean the fracture points which are points of the Pacific believe it or not so the jagged edges here belong to the Pacific plate and tension or energy or power gets transferred into North America coming in from the Northwest going down to the east by Southeast now in the past few days we had a big increase in seismic activity down here in California going into Nevada even further down to the south down in Mexico so 5.3 for instance struck last night down here in the Gulf of Mexico well not the Gulf of Mexico the Gulf of California in Mexico let me get a sip of my coffee sorry if we had a 5.5 in the Gulf of Mexico I think everybody would be paying attention to that well this is the plate boundary right down here to the south look at where it meets do you see that the stair step fracture zone that goes down and meets into Mexico well up here to the north 
right here at the California-Nevada border, a 5.3 earthquake struck as well. Both in the same 24-hour time period. 5.3 and 5.3. Right down to the point. The same size. One's on the plate boundary to the south in Mexico. The other's on what I consider to be either a new forming plate boundary or an ancient plate boundary that has been surpassed by the current San Andreas Fault. And we can go over to the USGS plate boundary map, but we'll just pull this earthquake here, this 5.3. It's at a place that you should all know if you're a viewer of mine. Monte Cristo Hills Volcanic Buttes, the spot where the 6.5 earthquake struck. You guys remember the 6.5 earthquake that struck about six months ago almost. And when this earthquake struck, it struck at the surface almost and caused a surface fissure fracture to form that was 12 miles long. And we're zooming in on the earthquake epicenter now. And wait for Google Earth to load. Dang, running a little slow. There's the earthquake epicenter. There's Monte Cristo Hills Volcanic Center. And the surface fissure fracture which formed, that's a little tongue twister, but the surface fracture that formed went in a direction, a certain direction, east to west pretty much. We can zoom in on the earthquakes now and you should still be able to see it. Most of the earthquakes going from west to east or east to west here at the center. You should also notice though, there's a line of quakes going northwest to southeast overall along the California-Nevada border. And there's a line of earthquakes going northwest to southeast along the ocean front of California, the beach, if you will, going up to the San Andreas. And I mean quite literally at the ocean front. We are right here a couple miles offshore. So going from right at the accretionary belt, or the accretionary plain, going up into the edge of the plate itself, the deformed edge of the craton, look at the purple here on the diagram out at the California-Nevada border. Goes and meets with the green. The green goes out to the ocean. So the two spots that are moving, one along the San Andreas, which is right here again, right along California's coast, the other interior, both are making the same line though, northwest to southeast. Then, a microcosm of that, a smaller version of that, going on down here at Ridgecrest. Again, same direction, northwest to southeast. And then finally, Southern California. It's a big ring of quakes, but it too, if you look at it, Overall, northwest to southeast, with the southeast tip being the swarming point. Now, we can go look all of these up if we need to. Do I need to look every earthquake up? Could take the rest of the day to do that. Let's start up here in the northwest, up in Washington. And let's turn on the last 24 hours worth of earthquakes. That'll get a few of these out of there. We don't need to look at the whole week. We just need to look at the past day to understand the areas that are moving and getting ready to move. So for instance, here in Washington, do you notice anything about the three earthquakes that are reported? Now, we have to go check and see if there are even earthquakes. They could be man-made events of some kind. All three are 1.3s. I have the 0.0, .0 and greater feed turned on for the last 24 hours. So let's go see. Undefined, uh, an explosion. An explosion next to Amboy, Washington. Let's go see. Remember what I told you. We had to go check and see if they were man-made events. Let's go see if there's a quarry here. Three 1.3s. Now, where's this quarry? Wait. We don't have a quarry there. That's a river that's connected right into Mount St. Helens. Now, what could cause an explosion right next to Mount St. Helens that's not human-made but could be reported as an explosion? What, what do you think could cause that? I would say maybe a steam burst of some kind. Let's go up to the north and look at this 1.3. Now wait, this one is not an explosion. And when I click on it, it doesn't say 1.3, does it? It says 1.4. Weird. This is from the USGS feed itself. That's where the number is populated from. Let's pull the coordinates and put them in. Enumclaw. En Enumclaw? Oh, wow. Don't even try. Not going to even try. But it's not an explosion. I guess that's the most important point. So where is it? Cumberland. Wait. We're right next to a series of high-voltage power lines. The big kind with the big towers. 
multiple racks, that kind of thing. Oh, wow. All right. Well, that's pretty interesting. We're right next to it, and there's two spots. There's one that's even bigger. These are the, the mega kind, the huge metal tower kind, and it's got one, two, three, four, twelve different rows of power lines right there. Pretty obvious. That's where the other earthquake is. So wait a second. We go from an explosion point on the side of Mount St. Helens up to a set of power lines. What about this over here? I mean, they're all three the same size. Oh, wait. I mean, come on. Another explosion. Let's go see if this is at a quarry. Three of the same sized earthquakes. One is quote unquote natural. Where does this go? Kennewick. There's no quarry here either. Look what we have right here. We've got the Hanford Nuclear Waste Storage Facility. And these are all the old experimental reactors that were broken down and they left a casket there. They took all the material and put it in storage here. They've got the LIGO Gravity Wave Sensing Station right here with its two long lasers. Lasers pointing in down here. I think they cross in a scalar. They have it pointed at the heaviest elements known to man on the periodic chart. So wait, how can we have an explosion where there's no quarry right next to a secure nuclear facility? I would propose that all three earthquakes, quote-unquote, are all the same size, and they're all related to each other, and they're maybe explosions from the plate shifting. Let's go down into Oregon, where we have a lone earthquake actually reported, which is very rare. Did you know that earthquakes don't strike in Oregon hardly at all? That that Oregon is just... Oh, it's not an earthquake. Never mind. It, it, it's an explosion again. Hey, you got... All these explosions, by the way, I had somebody write me from Oregon. They're a farmer in Oregon. who uh, They do some grape farming. Apparently, you got a lot of grape farming. Welch's grapes are up there, and they have vineyards. And they told me they don't burn at all, and they don't burn anywhere in the area. Even the farmers who are doing any kind of corn farming or something, they don't burn either, and they're not allowed to right now, and they'll get arrested if they do due to fire restrictions. Now, why am I bringing up farmers burning their fields in Oregon? Because a bunch of hot spots appeared up here. Now we've got an explosion. Let's go see where this quarry is. Wait a second. We don't have a quarry there. There's nothing at all. It's just trees out in the middle of nowhere. Not even a road or a power line is to the north. We do have high voltage power lines just to the north. Pretty interesting, but look at all the hot spots that are around here from the last couple days. Let's go see when these happen. Oh, that's from the last couple months. Those were the fires from before. Wow, okay, these were the fires from a couple months ago. This is the spot that burned. And it's right next to the high voltage power lines where the earthquake is. I don't know. Again, it's listed as an explosion. It's getting a little shady. A little bit suspect, wouldn't you say? And especially since they can list a quarry blast, which I'll show you in just a few. Let's go over to the east into Idaho where we have a 3.5. The biggest of the bunch, pretty much. 3.5, 3.6. This is right above the center part of the magma chamber for Yellowstone. Yellowstone is over here at the park, obviously, over at Wyoming. But the magma chamber goes down below all of Idaho, going over into Oregon. And the center part of the magma chamber is directly above, or directly below, where these earthquakes are. The earthquakes are directly above the center part of the deepest part of the magma chamber for Yellowstone. So they're related. They're related, and they're right in the middle of the arrow, too, but we're on the edge of the craton. Down to the south. Let's go down into Utah. North Logan, Utah, 7.7 .7 kilometer depth. Now, I last time we were at Magna, Magna, Utah. But this time we're at a different spot, so let's go see what's there. I, don't, I have no idea what's there. There might not be anything there at all little mound of some kind right there. Look at that. That's from the river. Whatever river that is. What is the name of this place? Garden? Okay. I don't see anything of any significance here nearby except for the Wasatch Fault itself. Now to see the Wasatch Fault, and I'm probably butchering the way that's pronounced, let's just zoom in and make sure we don't have any power lines or anything right there. 
I mean, we do have a road. Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, I'm not seeing anything of any significance there. Let's go look at the fault zone map really quick and show you where that is. Right here. So it goes up to the north, right past Salt Lake City, and goes down to the south. It's the Wasatch Fault. It's really on the edge of the Craton. That's, I mean, the Wasatch Fault, part of the edge of the Craton. Eventually, someday, they will have a marked series of faults that go out of Montana, down through Wyoming, connect down through Utah and Colorado, funnel down across New Mexico, make a U-shaped bend through Texas, make an R-shaped bend over into the New Madrid Seismic Zone, where it makes an N-shaped bend, ironically, down to the south, where it makes a U-shaped bend down through the southern states, and you will see a line of faults that connects all the way across this, where my arrows are, someday in the future, on the USGS site. Maybe even they'll have arrows showing you which way to look. But they don't have it mapped yet. You can just see the earthquakes going all the way across it. So coming out of the northwest, going down to the east-southeast, dead ending into the Wasatch Fault. We have explosions up to the west-northwest across Washington and Oregon. We have hot spots appearing across Oregon and Washington and Northern California, Central and Southern California with fires. So, Southern California with the fires. The hot spots going across Central, Northern California, Oregon, and Washington. And I already showed those, but let's just go see if they show up again. This is going to bring us the most current imagery. Let's go see. Let's go over on the West Coast, first of all. Man, the New Madrid Seismic Zone yesterday was crazy with those thousands of hot spots over in the Midwest. But let's just see what this shows. Now, this is, oh wait, right along the coast. Look at that. Right on the Shorefront, little black dot right there. That's one of them. Here they are yesterday. Look at it yesterday. Look at that. I don't know if you'll see these. You might have to look close. Maybe I could bring it in closer along the coast. And let's just rewind this again. This is yesterday. Yeah, there you go. You can see all these little black dots on the screen. Those are hotspot signatures. And it's not from houses or some kind of city or anything. You go down into California, and there were more a, a day ago. I don't know about yesterday. Yesterday, nothing. How ironic. The day before, there were a bunch. There's no way they could have gotten them all out if they were fires. So a lot of hot spot. Oh, and uh, another report from viewers up here. Heavy rain. Heavy rain. There's no way it could be anything else. The hot spots, it's the plate shifting releasing heat. Now, as the plate shifts and releases heat, there's also small vibrations along with the shifting of the plate. For instance, here we are, we're looking at yesterday's tremors, and the tremors are little red dots marked on this map. They are assigned magnitudes, but you have to think of these like vibrations, not like earthquakes. So don't think of it like a fracturing of the plate or a fault. More like, again, just vibrating as the plate is shifting. Now look where it's shifting, though. It's up in Vancouver Island, up in Canada, with just two small spots now shifting in California and Oregon. But wait, let's go back a day. The 12th. Look, we're centered at the Washington-Canada border region, and we have a cluster down in California. Let's go back the day before that, to the 11th. Well, we're pretty much only in the United States, with just a little bit up in Vancouver Island. Let's go back several more days. Let's go back, like, to the start of the month. At the second. We're only in the United States, centered down in California. So wait a second. 12 days ago, we're down in California. And then now, we're up in Canada. It's teetering and tottering back and forth. It's shifting back and forth on the Juan de Fuca fracture zone. One more time, let me show it to you here. It's this out here in the ocean. North side is shifting now, vibrating. And it was shifting and vibrating just a couple days ago down to the south. Well, wait. It shifted and vibrated down in California. And what happened down in California in the past couple days? 5.3 coming down along the California-Nevada border. And another 5.3 down here. Down in Mexico. Going along the red line. Down to the south. Mexico down here. And right up here, I already told you a couple times. 
this is connected what I think is an ancient plate boundary. Certainly, it's connected with faults all going in the same direction, northwest to southeast, right up into the area that shifted. So all this shifted, then we have a 5.3 here, and we have a 5.3 down here. I don't think we're done yet. Oh, I know we're not done yet. We go back to the tremor map, and you can see we're still shifting, and now we're shifting up on the north side of the Juan de Fuca fracture zone. What does that mean? Well, as we shift, the areas on both sides compensate. Pretty straightforward and basic. So when this moves, the area to the south in California, going across the plate all the way over to the east coast, following the Craton Edge, it compensates, and the area back behind it also compensates. It makes room for movement. And that's exactly what's getting ready to happen again. How big? Well, let's see. We got a 5.3 to 5.5 earthquake at the California-Nevada border. As a result of a couple weeks, I want to say three weeks, almost a month, of slow slipping. I don't think we're done yet. I think that that's just the compensation on the south side. The north side has not compensated. We have not seen a break up here on the north side except for a single four. So we have fives down to the south and nothing back behind it. And it's still shifting and now preferencing to the north. It means the north is likely to move next from the coast of Oregon up to the Hecate Strait. And it should be about the size of what struck down in California. If they report it. You guys know they deliberately leave earthquakes out. Fours, fives, and sixes. Oh, well, fours and fives. Fours and fives. They just don't even report them off the coast. They don't want you to be alarmed. If you live on the West Coast, did you know your officials hide earthquakes from you to keep you from being scared? They're more worried about you being scared than reporting to you this accurate data. Isn't that weird? Anyway, that's why I'm doing so well online. By the way, we've caught them doing that. And you can check the charts to see the earthquakes that strike out here and just they just don't report it. Say it's a mistake. Uh, well, actually... I, I do have to correct myself. Now they cut the feeds on many of these stations when the earthquake that strikes out in the ocean strikes. They say it's a technical error, that kind of stuff. Pretty crazy, huh? All right, let's go down to the south and go into California's coast. So this stack of earthquakes, let's go look it up. Long time viewers, you ready to repeat the same info over and over again? Look where we are. We're at the geyser. Cobb, Anderson, Geysers, California, depending on which earthquake you click on. Many of you should be able to almost repeat word for word what I'm about to say. We're getting ready to zoom in on Clear Lake Volcano. And what you see on the screen here is a set of geothermal turbines. The geothermal turbines go out to pipelines, and the pipelines go out to drill points. And the drill points go down a few hundred to a few thousand feet to get the steam from Clear Lake Volcanic Field. And to top it all off, they're injecting sewage down into the ground. You know, sewage like from your house. The nasties. Leave all the nasties down in the ground and up comes the steam. It's clean and environmental. Wastewater disposal turned on its head. Oil companies eat your heart out. So it's a volcano that's been drilled. And the number of earthquakes here has actually increased. The frequency has gone up. The magnitude or the power behind it has not. So think of this like a light drum roll, like a snare drum. We have not hit the bass drum yet. The bass drum just hit over here at the volcano down to the east-southeast. So this is a volcano, and it's swarming. But the predominance of the energy went down along the California-Nevada border and struck right at the California-Nevada border. By the way, there's something else here at the California-Nevada border, right next to all these earthquakes. A super volcano right at the border. Then a line of earthquakes that spreads out from the super volcano to other volcanoes, which then go down to the east-southeast, down into Nevada, to the nuclear test sites where humans have created small faults from blasting in the plate. Do you need me to prove all this to you? Do I need to prove myself? I'm online. I guess I do. Let's just go show you. So we'll go pull the coordinates from right at the California-Nevada border first, then jump across the border, then go down to the nuke test sites. We'll make this real quick. Starting to linger on. This update's starting to linger a little bit. Uh, I've got a lot to say. The most informative update on YouTube. Certainly the most detailed. 
show me anybody else who's going to take the time to look up any of these small earthquakes or large earthquakes. No one. Okay, so not even on the USGS website. Okay, so here, right? We're looking right in the middle of Mono Lake. Or, well, I'm sorry, not Mono Lake. There's Mono Lake. This is Long Valley Caldera, the super volcano. 1,000 cubic kilometers of melt down below. Now look at the coordinates and right across the highway here. Geothermal turbines. More drill points, but they drilled into the super volcano this time. Now when they drilled in, they didn't know it was a super volcano. In the past, let's say five years or so, they've done earth penetrating tomography measurements to find out how big the magma chamber is. It's a thousand cubic kilometers, classifying it as a super volcano now for certain. That's where the 1.0 is here. Whoop. And the 1.0 is here. The 1.6 is up at Mono Lake that I just mistakenly said right here. So Mono Lake is the other earthquake. Then we go across the border. And the bulk of the activity is over at Monte Cristo with just a 1.7 to the north and a 1.5, 2.0 to the southeast. Now that's where the line starts. And it goes down east, southeast of Monte Cristo down to the nuke test sites. So first, let me show you what's east southeast of Monte Cristo. Here's Monte Cristo, and we go east by southeast, unnamed, unnamed. You can see it, you can see the black basalt, you can see the ancient volcanic rock there. Now down to the east southeast from there, we have Blair Cone and Clayton Valley. Blair Cone is, well, it's a cone, Pretty well pronounced here, too. It's right off a highway. And that's where the other earthquakes are. So there's no doubting that. We go right down to the 2.0 Blair Cone. One point, I'm sorry, 1.2 at Blair Cone. The 1.5 back up to the northwest by the unnamed. We go to the east and southeast from there. Let's get the 2.1. Rachel, Nevada. And I cracked the joke yesterday. Well, I, actually, my viewers cracked the joke. They were asking me if I believed in aliens and all kinds of stuff. I'm like, guys, while I have seen something up in the sky, I know it was military. I know it was military. But it was flying faster than a meteor, so that's pretty encouraging to know we got that. Where are we? Why am I bringing all that up? Do, 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 do. You are now at Area 51. Hey, look, it's one of those planes where they fly the people in to come work for the day. They fly them out. Hey, what, what, wait, wait. What? Bunkers? New bunkers out at Area 51. The Groom Lake facility. Now, I think they fly them in and fly them out because if they stay there too long, they're going to start to glow. These are all of our underground nuclear test sites that are right here. And I can turn on the Google Earth community. We can randomly pull info on any one of these, hopefully. U.S. Nuke Operation Wool, W-O-O-L, January 14th, 1965, 7 kilotons. What are these? U.S. Nuke Operation Leyden, November 26th, 1975, 20 kilotons. Hundreds of them all the way across the valley here, going up to the northwest and northeast. And here's Area 51. So, I mean, the air, Area 51 is really just right next to the nuke test sites. And going down to the south, the 0 0.4, is coming in next to a place called Doomtown. Now, they call it Doomtown because it was blown away from surface nuke testing. They built a town, a model town, and then blew it away. Here's, here's the town, or the former remnants of it, Operation Rise Line in Doomtown. And here's the earthquake epicenter right next to it. Man-made faults in the crust from nuking. That's where all three of these quakes are. I mean, do I need to pull the other 1.0? This is taking us over next to the European test sites where we partnered up with France and the UK and did more underground nuke tests in the 1980s that were in the thousands of kiloton range. So megaton testing, basically. Well, almost thousand, like 800 kilotons or 900 kilotons, almost a thousand, which puts us into the megaton level. Huge tests. So let's recap. Let's recap the whole thing so far. Starting up to the north, three of the same sized quote unquote earthquakes, one of which is an, er is an earthquake. The other two are two explosions. One set of explosions coming in next to a set of power lines. The other is coming in next to the nuclear waste storage facility. Oh, and by the way, the other uh, 
at a volcano too, right on the side of Mount St. Helens. Going down into Oregon, we've got ourselves another weird little event going on here. Another explosion. And I got it on the screen here for you to see. They can list these as quarry blasts. There's no quarry there. Now the plate is shifting up in Vancouver, down to Washington and Oregon and California. The plate is certainly shifting and it's been shifting for three and a half, four weeks. Followed by a 5.3 earthquake down here at Monte Cristo Hills Volcanic Buttes. Going over to the super volcano and back up to Mono Lake. Going further back up to the stack of earthquakes at the geysers. And then a little handful of activity coming out of the Juan de Fuca itself, which I haven't really talked about much, but I'll just show it to you right here. Coming out on the red line, going down to the east by southeast. Okay, now, creeping section of the San Andreas. I've got a cat meowing. I may have to go tend to in a second, guys. Sorry, Duchess is occupied doing something else right now. So I may have to go tend to Wednesday. <laughs> Okay, really quick. A line of quakes going on the creeping section of the San Andreas down to a place called Parkfield. And Parkfield, well, San Lucas, right next to Parkfield. The earthquake capital of North America, or I think they call themselves the earthquake capital of the world. And they have a gift shop in the town that my viewers have sent me merch from the town. It's really cool. But it's on the San Andreas here, the creeping section. So I believe it's right in here somewhere. Parkfield. My borders and labels turned on? Interesting. Borders and labels to turn on, but Parkfield's not showing up. Anyway, Parkfield's like right here, and the earthquake's just north on the San Andreas. And over to the east, we have a bunch of pumping operations that start in earnest right here, go around the bend, and go down all the way following the San Andreas. Let me show them to you. I show them all the time. I'm not against oil and gas. I just have to point out that the drill points are getting hit, or right next to them. R right next to them is a better description. The earthquakes come down the San Andreas, get down to the drill points, and that's where the earthquakes kind of putter out. But they don't stop. They just cease right here, go into the pumping operations, and then turn back up down at the end of the pumping operations at the south tip of the valley. That just happened yesterday. A new push had come down and jumped over. We talked about it in my update, well, two days ago. Now, yesterday, the 5.3 struck over here, and I just proved it to you. Struck at a volcanic field, right next to a super volcano and there's a line of earthquakes spreading to other volcanoes and nuke test sites all the way down to the 0.4. The only quake that I did not look up is this 1.8 right down here at the California Nevada border. But I already know what's there next to Goldfield. You should too if you're a long time viewer. Yubihibi craters and the Ryan craters. Yubihibi and Ryan craters from volcanism. Show you. There's the earthquake epicenter. There's the border with California, Nevada. And here are the UBEB craters marked by the Smithsonian. And they're pretty impressive looking. I show them all the time when there's, whenever there's earthquakes here, I should say. We can go weeks, if not months, without any activity here at all. Only when there's a great push coming in do we see it spread down to the UBEB craters and down to the nuke test sites. It doesn't happen every day this way only when a big push is going across the whole plate. Now, Ridgecrest, Southern California. Ridgecrest, the number of earthquakes, has gone down, 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 down. Now, you're still going from last year, over a year, like a year and four or five months, almost a year and a half. You guys have been going every day with a bunch of small earthquakes, zeros, ones, twos. Now, it's flared back up over the last year. You've seen it flare back up into the five range every now and then. Upper fours, fives, but only when a big push comes down your way. In the last six months, someone has stood in your way completely and absorbed most of the energy coming in. That's the Monte Cristo Hills Volcanic Buttes and the Super Volcano to your north, deflecting the flow out to the Arrow, which then further deflects the flow all the way over to the edge of the Craton, over to Colorado, down to Texas. That's exactly what's happened. The flow has gone over to Colorado and down to Texas and over to the East Coast and bypassed Ridgecrest for the most part. Most of the flow coming into Ridgecrest right now is coming down the San Andres and jumping across the valley only, with very little coming in from the north. Coming in from the northwest at a diagonal angle across the valley, but it has to make it across the oil pumping operations, and that's absorbing some of the energy. 
Thus, the flow down to you has been cut off temporarily, I think. And I say temporarily because you can see which way this is starting to creep. It's starting to creep down to the nuke test site. It's not going across the arrow over to the east. It's going down to the east-southeast, down towards Vegas. Which means all of this is under pressure now. The south. And that would mean Ridgecrest, down to LA, down to San Diego, like a triangle. Let me get it on the good old Google Earth here for you. Going from Ridgecrest, down to LA, down to San Diego, and back up. Now there's something here too. There's something really, really weird. You guys know about star forts? You ever see a star fort before? What'd you, what would you do if I told you that there were people a long time ago? I think people. I hope people. Something. So, creatures. <laughs> dinosaurs. Uh, people a long time ago. Ooh, what if it was dinosaurs? People a long time ago that made a continental-sized star fort here. And it comes down... Exactly 300 miles. I'm actually over measuring here. 300 miles exactly to there. And then this is 125 or 100, 100 miles. So there's a star fort that's been built here where at least one of the pinnacles is still visible. But it's hundreds of miles long. Like, I, I don't know how, you know, the humans built these megaliths a long time ago. This is obviously one of them. And there, there's a couple more that go up over this way. And up over this way. They're just really hard to see. One of them's even fully cratered out. They look like it got bombed or something. <laughs> Mud flutters going to love me again, right? But there certainly is one here. Okay, and if you don't know about a star fort shape, I guess I need to show it to you so you understand. This is not a joke. This is not a joke. Wait do you see the shape. You'll see. Here, there it is. See the shape on these? See this? See how it comes up and goes out and comes back down? It's almost like a Pentagon shape without the bottom of the Pentagon. By the way, this is where the Republicans had their uh, convention this year. <laughs> Somebody knows something, right? So anyway, this comes up, goes down and over. That is the San Andreas, though. That is the fault. Let me go back to the map here. The Garlock Fault comes down and also matches that. Just ironically. It could be chance or coincidence that the, the fault matches that, but anyway, the line of earthquakes that goes off from that down to the east by southeast is minimal. It's all being directed over to the east so far, east by southeast, and that puts the pressure down into Southern California. So Ridgecrest, down to LA, down to San Diego, and back up. It's a sliver of a triangle, and there's no activity. Zero. None. Not even a microquake across the whole L.A. basin in the last day. Not one reported earthquake. That's highly abnormal. Normally, we would expect small earthquakes all across Southern California, including at the pumping operations, at the oil pumping operations, along the faults in Southern California. You have to take into account all the hot spots that are taking place. The fire that broke out here. There was a fire that broke out right here at the pinnacle of Lompoc, California, yesterday. Hot spots going all the way up the coast, all the way up off the coast, not off the coast, along the coast of Oregon, up into Washington, South Washington, where one of the hot spots was right next to where we have a new explosion. And that new explosion is right next to the nuclear storage site. Let's go over on the East Coast really quick. And go over into Arkansas, where we had a little bit more rare earthquake activity. I had people contact me about this one. They said, hey, did you see South Carolina got hit? I said, Somerville, South Carolina? Wow. I know some people that live around there. Ah, yes. Let's go put the coordinates in. Let's go see. Where is this location taking us? Whoa. Whoa, wait a second. I see something right here. I see a huge electrical j power substation. I I'm talking big. And then we've got a whole bunch of high voltage power lines here. And the earthquake is right next to it. 
There is no doubt about that. And we got a new subdivision there. Look at these nice new houses. Nice big old subdivision there. Well, I mean, there is no denying that. Right next to it. Is there anything else here of any significance? I wonder what these are. Some kind of mounds of some kind. That's pretty interesting. Some kind of mounding going on there. But they're old. Maybe strip mining of some kind? What do we got there? Farmers? Farmers. Farming. That's some weird farming, whatever they're doing there. Anything else here? I thought there was an Air Force base here. I'm pretty sure there was, or is. Oh, man. Well, you think you'd be able to see the landing strips if there's an Air Force base there. Now, the power lines there tell you something's gone. Wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, I was right. Yeah, this guy, this is the, um, the big time military right here. Big time. Let's get the place names turned on. What's this place called? Naval Weapons Station, Charleston, South Carolina. No biggie. What do you want to bet those are part of like some kind of storage facility? For, what do you want to bet these are bunkers of some kind? I bet they are. Why wouldn't they be? American La France. Okay. Enough of that. But hey, we're right next to it. The U.S. Naval Weapons Station and the high voltage power lines. You can't dismiss it. If you dismiss it, you're, you're just a dismissive person. You haven't discovered anything in your whole life. You've been dismissing everything too long. Let's go put the coordinates in and see what's down in Arkansas. Arkansas. I'm from Missouri. Friendly neighbor to the north. We got friendly neighbors. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood here. Let's go take a look and see where we are. Enola. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> you got to have one of these in every update. Some kind of mind bomb that just comes in. Look where we're between. We're between Holland and Enola. Now, what, does anybody know what Enola is? It's the story of the nuclear bomb. Enola Gay. The plane that dropped the first nuke. And then, of course, here we have Holland. Holland is Dutch. That's the Dutch. It's the Netherlands. It's, that's me. I'm Holland. I'm Dutch. And I'm the Dutch guy who was just talking about nukes. So, yeah, that's a little weird. Let's go zoom in and see what's at the earthquake epicenter. Aside from the twilight zone. Is there anything of any significance here nearby? Now, I do recall that Arkansas has a lot of oil and gas pumping operations. Now, I don't know if they're here nearby this spot. Let's go down to the south and see if we can find any. Uh, let me turn on all my place marks. Well, BB Greenbrier and Conway, I know they had a bunch of pumping out operations out here. I'm 100% on that. Why aren't they marked? I know I've marked them in the past. Well, that's going to take forever. All right, well, uh, you're just going to have to, I guess, trust me on it. Yeah, trust me on this. It's a YouTuber. <laughs> yeah, the famous last words, right? Um, well, I don't have a mark, so it's not going to help any. Look at all our hotspots from yesterday. How about an earthquake next to all the hotspots that happened yesterday? But I'm more interested in the nearby pumping offs. I know that they were here. Greenbrier, BB, Arkansas, that's where the first outbreak took place. Well, I'm just going to have to zoom in and look around. Oh, 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 it pays to look. There we go. Let me mark them so we can get them in the future if we ever need them. Fracking. Wastewater disposal. There's the tank, the pump. Let's go find the jack and the pipeline. Oh, there's more. Yeah, there's three. And you can see the three different points, or at least the two different drill points on that pad. So the pads are spaced out all the way around here. Up in the mountains, there's more. Another tank, pump, jack, and pipeline. And there's two pads right there. Okay, we're definitely close enough. Let, now let's just zoom, now that I know what to look for. 
there's probably more here nearby, but we always look within six to 10 miles. And that certainly was, was within six to 10 miles. I just want to see if there's any here within a mile or two. And so far, I'm not seeing much. Oh, wait. Looks like we have some old pads here. Yep. Capped off well. We got capped off wells there. What about this? This looks like they're stacking. No, we got a capped off well there too. They're putting hay on that. Storing hay. Well, you know what they do when they deplete a well or they'll, they'll inject it with wastewater. And the wastewater will stay in there for a couple years even sometimes as it breaks down the shale. It's not like it just breaks it apart instantly and releases the oil and gas. They put it down in the ground, let it break apart, come back and siphon it off. All right. We're definitely close enough. They're all around the, the area here, up in the mountains, right here, here, going down and around. Our closest spot is coming in right in here. This is our closest spot within like three miles maybe. And I always look six to ten miles because they can drill out by three or five miles. And then a fracture can occur and it can go out another couple miles. The next thing you know, you've got an earthquake six or ten miles away from the drill point. So let's recap. A line of earthquakes going across Arkansas right next to our drill point. Going over to the east over to the U.S. Naval Weapon Station right below high tension power lines, high voltage transmission lines. Let's go pull the 0, 0.0. Now I already know what's here next to Sparta. We already looked up the Sparta earthquakes a week and a half, two weeks ago. Look, there's been a series of earthquakes happening here at the Virginia-North Carolina border region at Sparta. And I cracked some 300 jokes and I talked about Leonidas' buns and all that. <laughs> that was pretty funny, right? Well, here we are again and the earthquakes are happening again. Right next to our high voltage transmission lines. And they're the big, huge towers, where then we have smaller power lines running underneath. It's right next to it. It's one of the only spots in the county that has them going through. That you can follow the clear cuts of the trees. So it's right next to it. It's too many of these. Now, I could carry on. We could carry on over here to the west. Let's go over into Oklahoma. Put the coordinates in. I haven't looked up any Oklahoma quakes in a minute, so this is actually a good little fresh breath of air. Mutual Oklahoma. Mutual. Oh, man. Get out that insurance policy. Hey! Hey! As they would say, look where we are. We've got a series of oil and gas pumping operations all the way around the area every single one of these little pads is a different oil well or a gas well mainly gas and they just keep going and going and going all across farm field after farm field tank pump jack pipeline etc just like what we were looking at in the other situation and now these are a little different i don't know what's going on here this to me looks like farming of some kind maybe chicken farm Right? You'd think that that would be a chicken farm. And that those would be chicken farms right there. And they have the water. They need that for the, for the, uh, for the chickens and stuff. Uh, but these are not chicken farms. These are oil wells. And the drill points go down a few hundred to a few thousand feet, if not deeper, maybe even a few kilometers. And you see how many different drill points there are. I marked some. And for every few that I marked, there's a hundred more that are not marked. There's over 500,000 different drill points across Oklahoma alone. So that's the spot being hit in Oklahoma. So Oklahoma getting hit at drill point. Then Arkansas getting hit over next to drill point. Then over to the east, we're over next to the U.S. Naval Weapons Station. Bunker facility and high voltage power lines. And high voltage power lines again right at Sparta, North Carolina. Over on the west coast, it's volcanoes. And it's at geothermal drill points where they're generating electricity. Pretty interesting, isn't it? You know, the only other spots that I didn't really compare for electrical generation directly, well, were up here in Oregon. I didn't look in Oregon. But the spots up in Washington, look, next to the nuclear storage site, electricity, and 
at the power lines directly and at the volcano. So what are the volcanoes? The power line, the geothermal drill point, and the oil and gas pumping operations all have in common. Well, they'll all be vulnerable to the plate shifting. And they'll all have a response to the plate shifting. Most will have either an electrical or a piezoelectric discharge effect, or there'll be a weak point in the plate, the drill points and the geothermal and the volcanoes. But it's starting to look like there's a connection between the power lines, the geothermal, the volcano, the plate shifting, the earthquakes, and the hot spots. And the hot spots show up when we have a lot of shifting happening across the plate. And we had a lot of hot spots in Oregon, Washington, and California over the past few days. We had a lot of hot spots over in Arkansas in the past few days. And what's happened at both now since? Noteworthy earthquake activity. Now, there's going to be people that say to me, oh, California gets hit all the time. No, it doesn't. We go weeks, if not months, without fours and fives. Sometimes even multiple months. So you can't say it happens all the time. Unless you consider every few months all the time. And with the hot spots showing up, those hardly ever happen. We don't see big pockets of hot spots all the time. Now, one final thing I'd like to point out. The USGS weighed in on the hot spots. They said it was farmers burning their fields, which is the most ludicrous, insane, half assed, half thought through explanation I've ever heard in my life. And now they look like real idiots for saying that. We know it's not farmers burning their fields because now the same spots are re hot spotting again, and they're not re burning the fields again, are they? And they're not burning fields at all over along the coast of Oregon. And we've seen hotspots in previous events going back several years. We've seen hotspots out in the ocean, which definitely rules out farmers burning their fields. So I'm just going to go look. We're going to go look at the New Madrid seismic zone really quick to end this and just see what's going on down here to the south. Well, hey, look what's happening starting right now. This morning, nothing, quiet. And then right here, boom. We start to get little black splotches of heat signatures. And then, boom, multiples. All of a sudden, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, they go on for five minutes and then they stop. Next frame, they're gone. One frame, they're there. Five minutes later, next minute, they're, five minutes later, they're gone. Ruling out farm fields. And it's spreading. It's spreading across the Craton Edge down to Louisiana, all the way up into Missouri. Louisiana, Arkansas, Missouri. What's that? The New Madrid Seismic Zone. And that's where we are. So you need to at least pay attention. You know, I'm trying to do my best to bring it all to you guys and, you know, every couple days maybe get on. you get, you got to realize I get under major attack. The more I do this, the more I show stuff that everybody disagrees with, man, they, the people that are trying to stop me are heartless. The fact that somebody's trying to stop me is really weird, actually, if you think about it. Because I'm just a guy, and I'm just showing you what I think and telling you what I talk about. They, they want to counter that. They can't stand that I'm telling you what I think it is. They don't, they, they don't agree, and they don't want you to agree with me. Why, though? Well, you're wrong, Dutch. Well, prove it. I'd like to see the proof of all these fires and the farmers. And I'd like to explain the earthquakes next to it. I guess the earthquakes are just chance. Are the hotspots and the earthquakes just chance that they're happening over and over again next to each other now? How about the power lines? The hotspots, the power lines, and the earthquakes. They can't all three be chance at every spot. It's almost every spot now where they're matching. With just a few variations on where they're not. Where a pre predominance or a bulk of the hotspots are happening right next to where the earthquakes are. And are happening right next to where our fires are breaking out. And where, of course, the power lines are. Pretty weird. I'll be back if anything else goes down. Do you guys have an earthquake plan? You know what to do when an earthquake strikes? You're supposed to, of course, take shelter. I'm kind of telling you something you already know. Take shelter underneath a table or a desk. 
but there's a lot of people that run around and scream earthquake and they don't know where they're going. Let me just tell you, you don't have to scream earthquake to a bunch of other people. You know why? They likely already know an earthquake's happening along with you. That everyone around you is already feeling the earthquake and they know it's an earthquake. So screaming earthquake and running around telling everybody doesn't really help anybody. You should maybe get underneath a table or a desk and start yelling, Hey, take shelter! Something like that. You could start beckoning to the people that you see running around with their phones and you could start waving them to get underneath the table or desk. They might thank you from being saved from being hit by things that are falling and flying around the room as light fixtures dangle from the ceiling and swing back and forth, still electrified. So think about it, taking shelter, and if you're going to go outside, you need to have an emergency kit that you can grab at a moment's notice. Some kind of backpack or bag that has change of clothes, set of shoes, seasonal specific. It also needs to have the basics like first aid and sanitation and batteries for your flashlight. You need to have a flashlight. Don't just rely on your phone. And have those things ready to go in a bag. You will be so much better off than all the other people who are just refusing to prepare at this point. It's Now it's cognitive dissonance. It is straight up people like, I don't want to prepare. Uh, I, I've got too many other things going on. The world's so negative. I, I just can't prepare. Oh, whatever. You know, what good is all the fretting about politics if you don't live to survive an earthquake you could have known was coming? You know, that's another thing, guys, entirely, which I'm not going to even get into. I don't care where you fall on the political spectrum. What good is any of your beliefs if you don't survive the dang earthquake? So, pay attention. Watch where the arrows are. The arrows tell you where to watch for the next activity to spread from. If you see a cluster of earthquakes here in Philippines, you know to watch for the flow to go up into Japan and ultimately into Alaska and over to the United States. So when you see a flow like this, think of it like a flood and think of this like the river. And you hope by the time it gets to you, it's spread out and dissipated enough. Same with going over to the West, over into Europe and Asia. Look, you see a big cluster of earthquakes coming out of Asia and going over into Europe. You know to expect, if you got fives on the way over now, that at least fives are going to come rolling into your area. And then you look down between your sets of earthquakes to find that fulcrum point between where all the areas are shifting, the middle, middle spot between the sets of quakes. I'm just explaining the basics. But watch it come your way. That's why the arrows are on here. It'll really help you in the, in the long term to understand which way this stuff flows. Overall, I'll be back if anything else goes down, okay? So much love. Be safe. Thank you for subscribing. Oh yeah, let me let me remind everybody. If you're watching on YouTube, you're watching a pre-recorded event. If you're watching on Twitch, you're watching live. You watch me live, I record it, then I go put it on YouTube. And I want to thank everybody on YouTube who's sharing the information. And I want to thank everybody on Twitch who's supporting the operation. Between Twitch and YouTube, it's making a difference. Professionals are getting the notices that I'm putting out. They don't agree with them, but they're still getting them. And you guys are getting it out to your friends, family, loved ones, coworkers. They're contacting me and thanking me when I get it right and asking me questions when I get it wrong. I like it either way. So much love to all of you guys for doing your part. Like I said, I'll be back if anything else goes down. I've been laying low last several weeks, last two weeks exactly almost. I've been laying low for good reason, man. Look at the world around you guys. It's freaking falling apart, man. People are like, you got to run. I'm like, no, no, no. You would have to take me hostage and make me be president. And to top it off, you have to up the salary or something, man. And no way I'm giving that away. Or I'll work for free. Here's the deal. I'll do it. I'll do it for free for two years. But I resign after two years. And in that two years, I'm going to just flip everything upside down. I'm going to arrest everybody. I'm going to oh, activate the FEMA camps and put them all in. Everybody, even innocent people, are going to go in. <laughs> we'll sort them out. We'll let God sort them out. No, wait, 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 wait. You can't. Wait, wait, never mind. Never mind. Wait, you guys don't want that? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's what you need. I don't know if you want it. Sometimes you don't get what you want, guys. Sometimes you get what you need. <laughs> ah, Duchistan. Yes. The dictatorship of Duchistan. Yes. 
I'm the supreme leader. Okay, we're out of here. I'll be back if anything else goes down. Much love.